Welcome one and all. I'm Mark Passio of WhatOnEarthIsHappening.com. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you to the organizers of the Shattering the Illusion Conference, and thank you for inviting me to speak here today. My presentation today is entitled, PSYOPs, An Introduction to Occult Psychological Warfare. And this is a topic that I have been planning to speak on for many months, was planning on doing it as part of my What on Earth is Happening podcast series. But since the Shattering the Illusion conference uh, presented a great opportunity to uh, break this topic out, I decided to make a special presentation specifically for this event. So let's jump into it here today. As always, with any of my formal presentations, I always give a few caveats before we begin the actual teaching of the presentation. Everyone always looks to hear new and striking revelations during a presentation, and I always tell people that you will not be receiving that here. It is the same basic thing that has been going on throughout human history, And it is no exception with this presentation. Uh, I am just trying to open people's eyes to what has been taking place. So, you will not be seeing or hearing anything brand new here today. Uh, As that ancient saying, saying goes, there's nothing new under the sun. And that means that the truth is objective and eternal. It has always been here. It always will be here. All that I can do is present it in a way that is specific to my personal style with my own particular aesthetics applied to the presentation format. And that is what I attempt to do. I always tell people if you are a psychologically immature person that is not ready to really handle harsh truths, my work is probably not for you. You probably want to start with someone who's a little bit Uh, easier to handle and might sugarcoat their delivery because you're not going to find that with any of my work. So I tell people right up front, even at the risk of uh, making them uh, take off before one word is said, um, this isn't for you if you're a child in your mentality, regardless of your biological age. So this presentation is for psychologically mature adults who are ready and able to hear factual information and truth. It is not for those who appear to be adults bodily, but who still have the psychological mentation of a child who attempt to think and reason, quote-unquote, with their emotions. You cannot reason and come to correct conclusions through the emotions, and people who are attempting to use the emotions to come to a realization of any type of truth about what's going on in our world are going to be uh, sorely disappointed. My presentation style is often extremely intense and at times even combative. I will not sugarcoat my words or my delivery. Some people who watch this presentation may may very likely become upset or angered by what I will say during it, and so be it. If that is the case, uh, that's fine. That will never make this material untrue, just because someone perhaps takes offense to it or gets angered by it. It's still true. Truth, by its very nature, is belligerent because it wages war at all times against all forms of deception and mind control. So, again, uh, just because you're angered by what I have to say during this presentation does not make the information contained in it untrue. And I always tell people before I begin any of my formal presentations why I do this work. It is not to be popular, it is not to make money, it is not to make friends, because telling people truth that they won't want to hear won't do any of those things. I speak publicly because I recognize that it is the right thing to do. In the crisis of overwhelming ignorance and deception in which we live, I have a personal moral obligation to communicate this truth and to communicate what I know to be taking place in our world, so that It will help others to understand that reality so that they can then take action to do something about it and to change it. And that's what I always tell people why they should take any action. 
Do it because it is the right thing to do, not because you're looking for personal reward. So Immanuel Kant said, do the right thing because it is right. And William Penn said, right is right even if everyone is against it, and wrong is wrong even if everyone is for it. Right and wrong are immutable, objective, built into the fabric of reality. It is for us to align our perceptions to objective right and wrong and then align our behavior accordingly. So let's jump into the material with the basics of PSYOPs or psychological operations. Uh, Let's look at the basics of uh, what these operations and events actually are. So what are PSYOPs? PSYOPs is an abbreviation for psychological operations, a type of warfare that involves the planned use of propaganda and other psychological means to influence the opinions, emotions, attitudes, and behavior of opposition groups. Such operations are generally intended to demoralize the enemy, to break the enemy's will to fight or resist, and sometimes to render the enemy favorably disposed to one's own positions, to the enemy position. So this is what PSYOPs are. They are part of psychological warfare. They are waged at a mental level to get people to think a certain way, to advocate for certain positions, to advocate for certain actions, and they are done in a subversive manner to often get people to take the enemy's mindset or the enemy's point of view to weaken the other side. And that's what we're going to be talking about here today, how that has been done and waged upon not only the American people, but the people of the world at large. And unless we become mentally mature and psychologically mature to understand how these tactics work and operate, we are always going to be Uh, able to be persuaded by them and have them work upon human psychology so that the ruling class continue to be able to use these tactics and get what they want uh, by their deployment. There are many different types of warfare, three specific types in fact, but uh, obviously there are sub-breakdowns to these types of categories. Uh, For simplicity's sake, I plotted it on a very simple chart um, with the breakdown being conventional warfare versus non-conventional or non-traditional forms of warfare, and then uh, overt forms of warfare, which are used out in the open and are traditionally recognized as warfare techniques, and then covert warfare techniques, or which I simply refer to as occult warfare. And the terms that uh, military strategists in general apply to these types of warfare are as follows. Fizz war, bio war, and psi war. And of course, psyops firmly falls into the category of psi war. Let's take a look at fizz war. It is both conventional and overt. This is physical warfare, traditional combat, traditional warfare tactics and methods which are generally recognized by just about anybody around the world as uh, people uh, waging conflict, waging battles, waging combat, uh, that are traditionally thought of as part of conventional warfare. They are out in the open, you know, bombs, missiles, tanks, soldiers, uh, machine guns, etc., and many other uh, weapons and, uh, you know, uh, deployments, airplanes, uh, you know, tactical nuclear weapons, etc., and you can go on and on. And people overtly recognize this as uh, open warfare, open combat. There is nothing uh, covert or occulted about it. When we get into bio-war, which uh, there are, again, many different subcategories and breakdowns of, you think of things like biological weapons, chemical weapons, chemical agents, etc., and those could be 
conventional, non-conventional. They could be overt or they could be covert, such as introducing agents into a food, a food, pop, uh, a, a food supply or a water supply to uh, affect um, enemy uh, populations, etc. Uh, or, you know, spraying things uh, very overtly out into the air, uh, you know, to uh, take down vegetation, as we saw, uh, you know, in the Vietnam conflict with Agent Orange. So biological warfare can take many different forms. And again, it could, it could be uh, done at a pharmaceutical level. You know, it could done, be done at a level of introducing covert agents into food and water supplies, which would take it into the uh, covert and even possibly non-conventional territories depending on the type of biological agents introduced. You know, this could be done medically, uh, as we're seeing now in the, you know, aftermath of the COVID-19 PSYOP uh, with, uh, you know, the so-called vaccines. So bio-war um, can really span the gamut of uh, the types of warfare, which is why I put it right at the cross-section in the middle. But then we have uh, psy war, which is largely what this presentation is going to deal with, obviously. And uh, PSYOPs fit into that category of both non-conventional means, which are not traditionally thought of as, um, you know, tactical methods of uh, overt warfare. And they are covert. They are occult methods, as we're going to see. So um, Psy War would fit into that quadrant. So it's important to distinguish between these warfare methodologies before we even begin breaking down, uh, you know, how psyops operate and what uh, some of the most important psyops we should understand as psyops even are. The next question about uh, psyops when we're defining it and looking at the basics is who actually conducts the operations known as psyops or psychological operations. And people tend to generally think of PSYOPs as purely military operations conducted by military personnel only because they, you know, even if they do study PSYOPs, they look at it as, you know, uh, military waging it, you know, uh, as a form of warfare. And as I said, it's not traditional, it's not overt. So the military is certainly not, ca they can be involved, but they're certainly not the only people who engage in PSYOPs, uh, most certainly. As a matter of fact, I would say the um, small portion of PSYOPs is waged by the military. Larger portions are really directed by people who are definitely uh, at a higher level of power in our world uh, in swaying the thoughts and opinions of human beings, uh, certainly, than uh, military personnel. So while military personnel do carry out PSYOPs at their levels of operation when it is necessary for them to be involved in them, very large-scale worldwide PSYOPs are almost always orchestrated by what I have referred to in my work as dark occultists uh, who constitute the ruling class of our planet. And again, we're going to talk about how PSYOPs are actually occult operations, this is a form of occult or hidden warfare against the human populace. And again, if you uh, want to, you know, revisit or uh, if you're new to my work and you want to, uh, you know, learn about the occult, I have many presentations on it, many podcasts on it uh, on my website, whatonearthishappening.com. I recommend, of course, my uh, seminars entitled Demystifying the Occult, uh, Parts 1 and 2. So, you know, military personnel can certainly be involved in PSYOP operations, but when you're talking about large-scale PSYOP events designed to uh, manipulate and fool the people of the entire world, they are orchestrated at much higher levels, uh, who I call the dark occult ruling class, the people who really are the mind controllers of our world, who uh, are entrenched and enthroned behind the ostensible uh, corridors of power and are should really rather be thought about, as we'll talk about, as ancient psychologists who understand exactly how to manipulate humanity. So at the real operational level of PSYOPs, um, at the highest level, we have what I would call sorcerers of consciousness at work. 
And these are the people who are the true puppet masters. They've been around for uh, since the dawn of human antiquity, you know, many, many, many thousands of years. They understand everything there is to understand about the human psyche, the human ego, human motivations, human fears, and they know exactly the strings to pull to manipulate people to get what they want. So that's who's really running the ops at the higher, highest levels. The military, um, you know, will get involved if needed uh, at the behest of the true ruling class, uh, and they will position them accordingly. But let's make no mistake about it, uh, PSYOPs go way outside of just purely military operations, and at the highest levels, uh, they are not, uh, the shots of them are not called by the military. They are called by the occultists, they are called by the highest uh, ranking members of the ruling class of our world. And when you really, you know, scratch the surface of that, then you get into talking about intelligence operations and then the control of the media, because they obviously coordinate through those institutions. So members of intelligence agencies, military, and the mainstream media throughout the world then actually follow their orders that they're given by the dark occultist ruling class, and then uh, at their different levels of operation, they conduct and implement the PSYOP both at a knowing level of that they fully are aware of what they are engaged in, and then many of them conduct the PSYOP at an unknowing level. They're just pawns in the game. They're just following orders. Um, often PSYOPs are run as drills that then go live, and many people uh, do not really know about their true operational level of involvement in the op. In the op. So you have a lot of different cross-coordination when it comes to who actually conducts the PSYOP, but make no mistake, at the highest levels, the occult sorcerers of our world are ultimately drawing up these plans and calling the shots about how they are to be implemented. The next question about the basics of PSYOPs is when and where are they conducted? Are these limited operations in scope and scale? Are they done just in certain geographic areas, etc.? We have to ask those types of questions to really understand how PSYOPs work. PSYOPs in general have been conducted upon human beings by the ruling class since the dawn of human history and all over the world in every geographic region of our planet. Whenever the rulers of any given geographic area consider it necessary to inject fear or confusion into the consciousness of those they rule, they will orchestrate psychological operations to tighten their grip on people's minds. Again, we have to understand the entirety of psychological warfare as constructed by the ruling class who are occultists to uh, put fear into people's mind, fear destroys consciousness, it uh, puts us in shutdown mode, and it prevents us from thinking clearly and logically and understanding exactly what is being done to us. And the occult ruling class uh, of our world are masters at this. They are masters at that chess game. They understand everything that they need to understand to be able to manipulate human beings. They've been at this work for tens of thousands of years, and as of right now, there there's really no sign that the people are truly catching on. And again, that's why I'm making a presentation like this to help people at a very basic level understand how these operations work, and actually, far more importantly, why they work. So let's move on. So how do PSYOPs work? Psychological warfare operations work via the manipulation of human beings through their fear, ignorance, and naivete. Again, very important factors. If people don't go into a mindset of fear, if they remain aware, if they remain knowledgeable, and they remain streetwise to how these, um, you know, complete con men and manipulators work, we're not going to fall victim to these operations, to these warfare operations that are done psychologically. 
But if we remain fearful, if we remain ignorant, we remain very naive and not streetwise, then the PSYOP is going to continue to work upon the human psyche, just as it has throughout all human history. Human consciousness is always driven by the love or fear polarity. These are the two ultimate primal universal forces that are always at work in the human domain of consciousness. The cosmic form of love is the polarity by which consciousness is expanded and improved. So many different spiritual teachers throughout the, the uh, you know, history of humanity have explained that, you know, uh, it's, it's only ever been a struggle between love and fear. And again, love isn't the Hollywood r romanticized version of love. It's not just romantic love. It's not even just brotherly love or platonic love. It is universal love, love for truth, love for all consciousness, love for all sentient beings, love for what is right, love for principles, etc. And that's the form of love we're talking about here that expands consciousness and improves human consciousness. And then fear, of course, is the polarity which shuts consciousness down and demoralizes and discourages human beings. Fear is the main weapon of choice in the PSYOP and those who are conducting it. Many forms of PSYOPs prey upon human beings by exploiting their deep-seated fears and their desire to be kept safe which there really is no such thing in the three-dimensional universe. Um, you know, we are physical beings, there are physical forces, there is no such thing as total safety, that is an illusion, and that illusion is preyed upon, it's reinforced and preyed upon by the occult ruling class. Other psyops work readily because of humanity's continued ignorance regarding human psychology and basic laws of nature. We don't know our own psyche, we don't understand our own deep-seated fears, we don't understand our own motivations, that which drives us, and we don't understand natural law. We don't understand universal principles, we don't understand universal morality, we don't understand uh, the you know, laws of cause and effect, and the laws of consequence of behavior. And not understanding those things, and being in pure ignorance of them, the bulk of humanity most certainly is, uh, you know, we are up against people who understand exactly how all of those things function. And when you have an extreme knowledge differential, it's going to develop into an extreme power differential every time. So one of the crux, uh, cruxes of this entire presentation is uh, what we're going to talk about right now, and that's not just how they work, but why do they work and why do they continue to work. And until this dynamic changes, for, forget about being able to truly defend against psychological warfare. This is what humanity has to understand and then work to improve. And that's what the great work really is, is improving our state of consciousness so we cannot be fooled, so we can tell the difference between truth and falsehood. So ultimately, PSYOPs can be successfully waged upon the human population because most human beings, sadly have not developed to a level of consciousness in which they can properly discern truth and reality from falsehood and fantasy. Now let me say that again because this is critical. This is the entire crux of why a PSYOP can work upon the human population. And it, it sounds even overly simplistic when you hear it. But, you know, this is what people really have to learn to accept and to understand and to understand not just that it is true but this is what our work is to do as people who do care about the truth as people who do care about freedom as people who do want the manipulation and the the whole con game of psychological warfare to be put to rest and to be at an end and not to be able to be successfully waged upon human beings to destroy our freedom and our rights and can continue to put us into a state of bondage, we have to understand that this is what our work is to do to help to improve the consciousness of all human beings. That is what the great work is to do. So once again, PSYOPs can only be successfully waged upon human beings because the vast majority of human beings 
very unfortunately and sadly, haven't developed to a level of consciousness in which they are capable of actually discerning truth from falsehood. That's ultimately what it comes down to, and it's, again, I constantly go back to this as there's only really two ways that human beings can be fooled. There's only two ways that we suffer. We accept things that are not true, and then we act upon them, and then we suffer as a result. So we are wrong. We accept falsehood, and then we act upon it. That's the first way that we can be fooled and the first way that human beings create self-inflicted suffering. And then the second way is we refuse to accept truth. We refuse to accept that which is true because of mental viruses that are implanted in our minds that are constantly telling us falsehood and this isn't true when it in, in, in fact is true. So if we reject the acceptance of truth and we accept falsehood in our lives, we're always, our behaviors are always going to be able to be led astray because we don't have that level of discernment to determine what is in fact true and what is in fact false. And until humanity's aggregate level of consciousness improves in that way, PSYOPs will continue to be a successful methodology to control human beings. Quite simply put, we absolutely have to work to improve human consciousness to be able to detect the difference between reality and fantasy. And to those ends, I'm going to post here, uh, put up here as part of the slideshow a um, scale of consciousness that was uh, basically um, created by David Hawkins. It's called the Hawkins Scale of Consciousness. I've actually talked about it on my podcast series. I've talked about it in some of my other work. I think it was um, uh, Sacred Gift of Anger that I uh, had this slide in and explained this logarithmic scale of consciousness that uh, the researcher David Hawkins uh, created. Basically, it ranges uh, at it, st it starts really at zero, where, where there's no consciousness, and then it goes uh, in an um, exponential um, fashion from shame, rated at 20, all the way up to enlightenment, rated at 700 plus, with all kinds of stages of consciousness in between. Guilt, apathy, grief, fear, desire, anger, pride, courage, neutrality, willingness, acceptance, reason, love, joy, peace, enlightenment, etc., so you have very contracted forms of consciousness at the bottom give, being given a very low rating on the Hawkins scale, and then you have much more expanded forms of consciousness uh, as you go higher up uh, on the Hawkins scale. Uh, and there is a basic uh, delineator or a dividing line uh, that is a crux point, is a, a very important division point uh, for people to understand on this, um, again, exponential slash logarithmic scale of consciousness. And that is approximately at uh, Hawkins' uh, 200 point uh, in his scale. And this is the uh, critical dividing line in the, in the uh, consciousness scale. Again, it's uh, almost right in the middle, practically right in the middle of the entire scale. And you see that it actually falls at the level of courage. Okay, so it's actually a courage that often determines what we are willing to confront and look at and accept. And that's the actual dividing line right there. And what it represents above and below the line is uh, if, if consciousness is at any of the stages below uh, that line of courage at 200, there is in the being and in the aggregate of beings who are at that level of consciousness, uh, there is an inability to actually discern truth from falsehood below that line. That um, people who are in those stages of consciousness, and they're largely governed by fear and ignorance, cannot actually tell the difference between what is true and what is false. They do not have the actual ability in the totality of their consciousness to be able to discern the difference between truth and reality and falsehood and fantasy. They cannot do it. 
okay, until they work to bring their consciousness up to a higher level and evolve in that way, in consciousness. And above that line, uh, human beings are at a form of consciousness in which they are able to discern truth from falsehood. They can tell the difference between truth and lies. And this is what the great work is to do. It, it's to improve human consciousness in the aggregate, to reshape and remold the human psychology. So, And it, that can be done. It's very, very workable. It, it, is, it is able to be improved if it is worked. And uh, that's what the great work is to do, to improve consciousness such that uh, more and more human beings are able to discern truth from falsehood. It can be done. But uh, people have to be willing to do it and do that work. So, you know, until humanity's consciousness is improved in that way, PSYOPs will continue to be a successful methodology to control human beings. Okay, so that's the, the big takeaway in this section. This is why PSYOPs work. Because consciousness is so low, in the aggregate, human beings can't tell truth from falsehood. And so PSYOPs is like taking candy from a baby. It's a piece of cake to the dark occultist. And until we, as people who do understand what is taking place and going on, reach out and continue to do the work to educate and edify others regarding how these methods of manipulation work, don't expect it to change. PSYOPs will continue to be a successful method of warfare waged upon humanity and uh, a successful methodology of human social control. Let's look at this section that I call PSYOPs and the Occult, because PSYOPs are occult operations. Uh, I would say that psychological warfare firmly fits into the footing, into the uh, definition of being uh, occult information and occult knowledge. And it is one of the ways that dark occultism actually wields the knowledge that it possesses against the people as a form of manipulation and control. So PSYOPs are occult ops. Once again, I always define occultism in uh, this way. It's a body of science which is not widely known to the general population consisting of hidden knowledge about the workings of the human psyche and the laws of nature, both the seen laws, or physical laws, and unseen laws, or spiritual laws, the laws of morality, the laws of behavioral consequence, natural law, in other words. The knowledge contained within the occult sciences can be used for good, or the uplift of human consciousness, and conversely, uh, this knowledge is a double-edged sword. It can also, unfortunately, for those having a, uh, a psych psych psychopathic mindset and in a degraded form of consciousness themselves, when they come into this knowledge, as dark occultists do, it can be used for evil. It can be used for manipulation, control, and even putting people into bondage and slavery. And that's what psyops ultimately are doing. They are using the knowledge of the occult world, of occult teachings since time immemorial, which are ultimately about human psychology and spirituality, and that have been hidden to create a power differential between the ruling class and those who they rule. Um, dark occultists take that, and, that knowledge and use it uh, as a form of manipulation and control over others who lack it, who are in ignorance of it. Again, if the knowledge of mathematics isn't present, somebody, somebody who is disposed to do so could lie to someone about how much something costs, what, what change that they were owed if they paid them uh, too much, and just get away with it because the, if the other person's completely ignorant regarding arithmetic and, and, and math, they're not going to know any better. Uh, and it, it is the same in this instance. If people are not educated as to human psychology and spirituality, uh, it's going to be like uh, just uh, robbing someone who has no knowledge that they were even robbed because they don't know how to add and subtract. 
That is literally how easy it is for these dark occult sorcerers to, to continue to get away with manipulating people like this. So, um, you know, this photo here, this image here, I should say, um, you know, is what I generally use to describe occultism in general, that it's the study of all of the laws of nature. And that would paint it in somewhat of a good light. And there is certainly a light side to the occult. But the next image that I'm going to replace this with is, I think, one of the most perfect images that I would say describes the modern dark occultist. And that is this. You see, we tend to think of, because of Hollywood imagery and stories, of Satanists, dark Luciferians, dark occultists, just the, the, the psychological rulers of our world as somehow being, uh, you know, looking like Voldemort or something from Harry Potter, you know, or looking like a, a wizard or looking like, you know, some uh, dark robed figure, you know, walking through a castle or walking out into the woods to conduct a, a, a bonfire lit ceremony. And really nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, as I've described over and over again, you're more likely to find dark occultists, Satanists, Luciferians, dark Luciferians, etc. Uh, in a, um, you know, a CEO office or in a boardroom meeting of a major transnational corporation or, you know, at the highest levels of a, a banking institution or a medical institution, etc. Certainly in intelligence agencies. I would say that's where they're largely concentrated and certainly running psyops from within because of the uh, ability to concentrate knowledge and uh, coordinate the operation. So this is the level that the dark sorcerer is actually working from and more likely what they would actually look like in the real world. Certainly um, far more than how any Hollywood depiction might ever depict them. So dark occultists have deliberately hidden the knowledge of the occult world in order to create and maintain a power differential between those who hold such knowledge and those who remain ignorant of such knowledge. And again, I think that's one of the uh, best images that I've found yet to uh, paint the picture of what a Satanist is more likely to look like in our world. And that should be kept in mind that uh, Dark occultists are the ones who are actually conducting psychological warfare and psychological operations upon the people of our planet. The dark occult agenda and how they manifest it. Dark occultists should be more accurately perceived as ancient psychologists who hold and wield hidden information in ways which manipulate and exploit the ignorant and the fearful. Through the power differential they gain by way of manipulating those who remain in ignorance of this critical occult knowledge, this small minority who are in the know wish to permanently enslave the masses of humanity and effectively become God on earth. That is their religion. That is how they see themselves. They are technocrats. They are trying to implement a global, globalist technocracy. I call the rulers of our world a technocratic occultocracy. I think it's one of the best terms that has really been applied to who rules our world and how it is ruled. It is done through modern technology and it is done occultically through psychological means and also pharmaceutical means, certainly. And the rulers of our society the actual entrenched ruling class, again, seated and enthroned and unable to be voted out behind the ostensible institutions of power, are these types of occultists. They are transhumanists in many uh, instances. They are certainly technocrats and advocate for a technocratic globalist world. And they are occultists. So we have 
We don't have a patriarchy. We don't have a matriarchy. We don't even have a society that's ultimately um, uh, ruled by government, even though that is the method by which they implement their control. Our world is ruled by a technocratic occultocracy. And let's look at some of the types of psyops that they employ. So our main sections that we're going to cover through the rest of the presentation are going to be the types of psyops that they wage. We're going to break them down into five different categories or types of psyop operations in general, five categories of psychological warfare. Then we're going to look at examples of specific psyops and look at what type they were, when they happened, what their uh, you know, uh, ostensible happenings were. I call that the public sell, right? What did, what did they sell to the public? What was the official narrative that they sold to the public? Because the public is gullible and naive and ignorant and fearful. And then we're going to look at the true reason for the op. Okay, when we go into the section on actual breakdown of infamous psyops. And then to close the presentation, I'm going to talk about what can we do to work human psychology such that we um, work on our psychology in ways that help us to defend against uh, accepting psyops when they come about so that we don't immediately react and so that we can, are able to recognize them as a psyop and not be fooled. So let's jump into uh, this section which is entitled Types of Psyops. The first type of psychological warfare operation is what I label and uh, one of uh, the, the, the five main types uh, as I break down psyop operations as demoralization psyops. So demoralization psyops are types of psychological operations which are conducted to mentally weaken a population by making them feel hopeless or powerless to effect change. Demoralization is often, as, as a general strategy, as a general psychological methodology, is often the very first step in carrying out short-term political coups or long-term cultural disintegration. And I would say that these are the ways, these are the methods by which uh, enemy forces first begin their attack. Before they do anything to a greater extent, they're always going to attempt to demoralize the opposing population or the enemy population. This is what we have to keep in mind is that, and as we'll see in the modern day, uh, we were led into the era of modern psyops through demoralization operations. So again, they are conducted to mentally weaken the population, make people feel depressed, make people feel powerless, make them feel like there's nothing I can do, I can't affect change. This is all, these are all forces that are far beyond my ability to do anything about, when in fact that is not true. And uh, the, the main thing that people can do is to speak out about it and tell the truth about it and make the voice of the truth stronger than the voice of the lie. That's a tall task, but it can be done. But people have to stop holding their tongue, they have to stop being afraid of what other people will think about them, and they have to speak because it is the correct and moral thing to do. Not looking for any personal reward, not that it's going to make their life easier or more comfortable, because more likely than not, it is not. We have to simply choose to tell the truth because that is the correct and moral thing to do. So, this is the first uh, category of PSYOP psychological warfare operations. Let's look at the second category. The second category is a very popular one. It is the false flag, false flag psyops. Very, very, very popular in both the ancient and the modern world, continuing right up into the modern day. False flag operations are psyops whereby a combatant attacks itself or its own assets and blames the attack on an enemy. This attack will then stir up political and moral support from the attacker's own people. The one who actually waged the attack on itself is going to get sympathy and support from its own people because they're making it look like the attack came from an enemy. 
That's what a false flag is. And then the people on, you know, the, the, the side that was attacked but actually did it themselves, then will encourage the aggressor, the one who instituted the attack on themselves to begin with, who is trying to do that to justify going after the enemy because they don't want to look like they started it, okay? Um, the people will then encourage the aggressor to respond against the perceived enemy with even more aggression. This type of PSYOP has also been called problem-reaction-solution by many analysts and researchers. It is the Hegelian dialectic of um, a problem-reaction-solution or thesis-antithesis-synthesis. It means that you have a pre-planned notion or idea of what you want to implement, but you know that you can't make a quick jump to go from point A to point B because the people may resist that. They may say, hey, we don't want to get involved in that. We don't want to, to go to war with these people. We want peace. And so you wage a bombing or you wage a uh, false flag attack against your own people and then the people get whipped up into a fearful frenzy. Oh, what, is, what are we going to do about this attacker? And it actually came from their own government, their own intelligence agencies, etc., False flags are incredibly successful because people still don't understand what they are. They don't understand how they work, why they work. They can't comprehend the evil that would have to be present in a mind to want to do the, these type of things. And here on the left you see you know, the stereotypical false flag, uh, that may be the, uh, the, the beginning in modern history at least of false flag operations, the document. This was the, uh, the uh, introductory uh, page uh, uh, of the entire cache of documents that represented Operation Northwoods, which was a planned but never implemented attack upon the U.S. mainland to blame it on Cuba as a pretext for an invasion of the island of Cuba in the, during the 1970s. This actually never was brought out and used, but it has been declassified, and we know that uh, agencies within inside the United States government were perfectly willing to uh, have an, uh, a, a false attack that they did on the U.S. homeland uh, you know, in the continental United States, and then blame it on Cuba as a pretext to invade. And, you know, many, many, many other uh, false flag psyops have certainly been conducted since. So false flag psyops is um, the category of psyops uh, number two. Let's look at the third. The third category of psyops is what I call disinformation psyops. So disinfo psyops or disinformation psyops inject false information into targeted data sets in order to lead people away from truth, promote beliefs that weaken or harm an enemy, give people a false sense of hope, or to make certain groups of people look foolish or gullible in the eyes of others. So this is a very sophisticated form of psychological warfare. And it's more subtle than something like false flags or even a demoralization psyop. This is one of the categories that is increasingly being used and waged upon the uh, human uh, public in the modern day. And it's because um, disinfo psyops, because of the presence of the internet, can go so viral that they can basically move throughout the human population at an incredibly fast speed due to technology and the ability to transmit information all over the world uh, very, very quickly, certainly at speeds that were not possible in former decades. So again, you're going to take information that is not true, you're going to inject it into the public consciousness to get people to latch onto it and believe it in an almost religious, fervorous way so that you're actually getting people to do things that are wrong, to take positions that are incorrect, that are going to lead them nowhere, they're going to you know, leave them chasing something that is ultimately not true and worthless, and that makes them look bad, that uh, wastes their energy, that uh, even could give them a sense of false hope that someone's coming to save them or that the situation is in hand when it most certainly is not or just to make them look like idiots, just to make them look like they don't have the ability to reason, that they don't have the ability to really understand 
uh, reality. And unfortunately, the sad truth about it is that most people do not. Most people cannot reason at that level because they're simply not intelligent enough yet. They're simply still at a low level of consciousness where they cannot perceive truth versus falsehood. And it's, it's, it's very sad. It's extremely sad. It's a frustrating situation. It's a situation that, you know, I've been working for the last 15 years of my life to try to help bring some improvement to. And it's, uh, you know, it, it can seem like a losing battle at times because uh, the, the masters of our reality at the current time can bring out these disinfo psyops and seemingly change the game at a moment's notice and create a whole new pathway of division and deception. And they get a whole lot of people, uh, you know, biting that bait. And they, they hook them and they reel them in. And, uh, you know, we're going to talk about uh, a couple of those types of psyops a little bit later when we break down specific infamous psyops that have been waged on us over the last uh, many centuries. So uh, that is the, um, I believe that's the third uh, or fourth category. Yeah, that's the fourth category of psyops. So let's look at the fifth. Uh, I'm sorry, that's the third. This is the fourth category of psyops, which is stand-down psyops. So, stand-down psyops are uh, exactly what it sounds like, get, to get someone to stand down, to get someone to desist and uh, not follow through with a specific uh, course of behavior. And uh, it's, it's easier than people would imagine to get people not to take action. To get people to be mobilized and take action is actually a very, very difficult task in the modern world because most people want to be left alone. They do not want to, uh, you know, leave the comfort of their homes and their lives and, and take action in the world and disrupt their lives uh, in ways that they feel uh, are uncomfortable to do. And stand down psyops are something that make people basically feel like I don't have to do anything because someone has my interest in mind and they, they have this and it's assured and it's in hand and I don't actually have to get involved myself and, and take up that uh, level of sacrifice and discomfort in my own life. So stand down psyops are conducted in order to make people believe that someone or some group external to themselves is going to, quote, save or, quote, rescue them from their current serious or dangerous situation. The belief that someone is coming to help them or that some other person or group has the problem in hand makes them enter into a stand-down mode of consciousness and thereby take no real-world action to improve their own situation in the immediate or long-term sense. So I hope, uh, you know, what I've written there really accurately describes why stand-down psyops are actually so powerful. I mean, imagine getting a whole bunch of people to think in their minds psychologically, my action is not actually required to rectify this situation. Someone else who is external to myself or an external group has my own interests at heart to such an extent that they're going to have the situation in hand and they're going to deal with it so that we don't have to as the, the, the average uh, Joe public, member of the public, okay? It's very sinister and it's very, very, very effective. And the reason it's effective is because people always want to think something external to themselves has their interests at heart. They don't want to feel alone. They want to feel like somebody else has them in, in hand and is protecting them. And it's, it's all going to be okay. And they don't actually have to do anything because more important people than themselves are actually working on the situation and working on the matter. And they're going to have it resolved. And, and everything's going to be okay. It's an extraordinarily childish and my naive mindset that is unfor unfortunately so prevalent in the human population because most of the human population, again, is not really at a true psychologically sophisticated form of adulthood. They, are, they may be adult in their bodily you know, look and, you know, uh, they, uh, their biological age may indicate adulthood, but in their actual mentation and psychology, they have not 
evolved even to a level of true adulthood, let alone a higher level of consciousness. So it's a very sad situation that so many people fall for disinfo and stand down psyops, and again, we'll get into them in the next section. But stand down psyops, so important to understand. You know, of course, you know, you have things like the New Age movement, which we're going to talk about, a p- part of stand down psyops, something that I've done whole you know, presentations, whole seminars on, uh, destruction of the action principle, the sacred masculine principle of action. Without action, nothing gets changed in our world. So again, disinfo psyops, very sophisticated, subtle, occult, getting people to believe in things that are completely incorrect, and that takes them away from the true battle and, uh, you know, demoralizes them, uh, makes them look bad in the eyes of others, combined with stand-down psyops, creates more division, um, gets people not to take action, gets people to look at things like, this isn't something that I need to be personally involved with, uh, truly, because uh, we have uh, people in groups at much higher levels of action and much higher levels of importance than myself that have this in hand. And nothing could be further from the truth nobody's coming to rescue us. There are no organized white hats. There are no saviors. If you believe that, you've been, you, they got you hook, line, and sinker. Hook, line, and sinker. They own you lock, stock, and barrel. And it's, again, it's, it's sad. It, it's, it's a shame uh, that so many people fall into this mentality because it is the mentality of an ignorant child. So, the last and uh, fifth category of psyops is worldview psyops. And a lot of people would not even recognize uh, worldview psyops um, because they're so deeply entrenched. They literally, it, it, it literally just blends in with the background form of consciousness of humanity. Uh, worldview psyops often the question that you have to ask is not how many people believe in them, but how many people don't believe in them. Because the majority of human beings buy into worldview psyops. Again, this is mind control at the highest level. You could look at worldview psyops as. So, worldview psyops are conducted to completely change the way whole populations think about reality and the human condition. These types of psyops are actually the least recognized by the human population as a whole because they are so deeply ingrained within human cultural, quote, norms. In fact, worldview psyops are the oldest and most widely employed form of psychological operations conducted by the occult ruling class throughout all of human history. They're the oldest they're the most widely employed. They're so deeply entrenched that it's not even a matter to ask how much of the human population accepts them, believes in them, has made them their religions. But we need, we just you know have to ask how few people don't believe in them. You know how few people have actually escaped the uh, you know the thrall in their mindset of worldview psyops. Very, very few percentage-wise. That's why the world's still in the condition of slavery. That's why human beings are all ultimately still enslaved, because worldview psyops have worked upon the ways that we generally see reality and ourselves and our entire society, what we believe to be true, what we believe to be acceptable, what we believe to be moral, and because those uh, psyops have worked upon the human population, that is the exact reason that the human condition is slavery. So that completes the section on the five specific types or categories of psyops. And again, that is my breakdown, and that is a broad general overview of the specific uh, types of psyops uh, as categories. Now let's look at individual psychological warfare operations from a recent historical perspective, but I will say that these infamous psyops are both ancient and modern, 
and perhaps it would would have been better to write here modern and ancient because we'll look at some of the modern psyops that have been conducted upon humanity and the ancient psyops are really the worldview psyops that have been around forever since human human beings have been here on this planet so we'll we'll look at those uh, after we look at some actual uh, more modern ones